So, transformation and replication. 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 What does it mean to replicate? To reproduce results in men. Are we together? One of the ways you must produce products is to first have a simulation of the model. Am I right on that? When you simulate the model and it meets your quality control standards, you mark all the parameters that were used to produce that initial model. That becomes the pattern. And notice the making of the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth becomes faster and easier because you are not guessing. Research and development units in many organizations are saddled with the responsibility of testing and trying many models until they come up with a model that they perceive to be acceptable per time. Am I right on that? They now define the parameters that produce that model and then they must produce their results. That's how they make cars. So the car in Abuja looks the same if it's the same model as the car whatever you even use the consciousness of models and their quality to identify cars identify things you know the difference between a mercedes-benz from a toyota from a bmw you know the difference between this device and versus that one because of models replication and transformation is easy when people understand the power of followership now, let me say a few things before we discuss some principles here. I want to talk about pioneering moves or pioneering anything. I've studied a bit about pioneering. To pioneer means to start. To pioneer means the journey that makes you the model yourself. And let me submit to you that pioneering anything, any move, any dimension is very challenging. Why is it challenging? Because largely you may not have references or enough references. Hallelujah. There are people who are called authorities in certain fields of the academia. And the reason why they are called authorities is because they are given the credit and the honor of pioneering certain fields. Maybe genetics. Are we together? Yes. Maybe, you know, whatever complicated field. And so if they are able to arrive at something for as long as they are, uh, they are alive, anybody who is building anything with respect to their field must acknowledge them and consult with them. They have become authorities in that field. Pioneering any move of God, any spiritual activity is very difficult. Let me tell you this. One of the reasons why you see that we honor fathers is because we give them the eternal honor for pioneering certain things. There have been many moves of God that were pioneered dimensions that were imported to the earth. And the first set, the first fruit of those who received that dimension, they survived things that very few people could survive. You read it from the Bible, you read it through history. Are we together now? Yes. When Paul was sent to the Gentiles, no one had seen that kind of thing because salvation was to the Jews. Now Paul was reintroducing an aspect of the gospel that became a subject of debate for a long time. It brought trouble between Paul and Peter. Peter said, no, listen, this gospel, the Gentiles are uncircumcised people. They are not supposed to be part of this covenant. And now Paul is saying, no, I've encountered Jesus. And I've read from prophecy that the same Lord is rich unto all. That salvation is first of the Jews. Now what Peter was saying was that the Gentiles have to become Jews by circumcision. Then when they are now circumcised, they can now receive the experience. And Paul is saying, no, this is a new order. They do not need physical circumcision again. That they are spiritual Jews because they have believed in Christ who was rooted in Abraham. And Peter said, no, I don't agree with this. Pioneering is very hard because for many years you will walk alone. There are people who introduce certain products from an economic standpoint in Nigeria and for many years they walked alone. 
There are many people who introduce certain things by the Spirit. Are we together now? All through church history. Anywhere you see a pioneer of a ministry, a pioneer of a business, a pioneer of a, a dimension in the Spirit, they are deserving of your honor forever. In Nigeria here, for instance, we never knew and we never believed that God could raise men to build cities, men to become like cities. But once upon a time, many years ago, those we call fathers today as young men, they went largely to places like Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they saw what God was doing through men like Kenneth E. Hagin and all those who had gone before him. They returned back with an anointing and an inspiration and one by one, you would hear that they went to bushes and began to buy kilometers like madmen with no guarantee. And they turned those bushes, like I said last week, to cities. It was a pioneering grace. How about those who started 24-hour prayers? There was no guarantee that that would happen. And there are campgrounds today where people literally pray 24 hours. There are many things that we never knew that the church and believers could come into. And then God sampled a few people. Now, the law is found in Isaiah 9 and verse 8. Give it to us, please. Isaiah 9 and verse 8. The Lord sent a word into, not to Jacob, into Jacob. He sent a word, a dimension into Jacob, and it lighted upon Israel. Every time God wants to introduce a new dimension to men, he will find a man. Say a man. And he will place an unction upon that man and enter a covenant with that man. That man will now model that possibility to the body of Christ. When he models that possibility, then as many who believe that this is a reality, now begin to come into those experiences. Hallelujah. We never knew that there was a creative dimension, for instance, to the prophetic. Most people's idea about the prophetic is prophesying by revealing information. But many of our fathers came and they brought a dimension, a creative dimension. They may not tell you your name and tell you all of that, but men like Baba Debe will say, there's someone here in the name of Jesus. By tomorrow, this will happen. And you hear people shouting amen like madmen. And sometimes they live from that church service into their testimonies. That was where we learned that the creative power, the prophetic word, is not only revelatory in nature, it is also creative. Today, we have stood upon those models and it has helped us to do ministry effectively. Are we together? That beyond revealing details, which is profitable of course, we can speak over people that in the name of Jesus may God open a door and our faith is anchored on Jesus but anchored on the possibility that has been modeled to us by those who have gone ahead of us. If you understand me, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Ora Robert in modern history, I believe is one of the persons who showed the dignity of kingdom wealth and prosperity that it can happen to a man who was called by God. Until then, people never believed that if you answer the call, you can live a life of dignity. Are we together? Now, there are exaggerated dimensions to prosperity I will always observe. But I'm talking about prosperity with a purpose from a kingdom standpoint. It was Ora Robert who believed God and brought, I think, the generation of the last, say, 60, 70 years into the consciousness that God can bless men void of manipulation. God can bless men regardless whatever it is they are doing. And he built today the Ora Roberts University. When you get to that campus, you will see a praying hand as a symbol that God answers prayer, as a testament of faith. When he set that model, many people began to believe God. And you see, the replication became faster. Today, by the grace of God, down through history, among the many things we have received, when we are believing God for things, we also believe him for the blessing. You're sitting here today 
Your comfort while you are listening, void of pressure and void of manipulation is because of someone's sacrifice. They showed us what God could do and we released our faith towards that direction. Hallelujah. Billy Graham, among many, he was one man who showed us that on account of the gospel, you can fill a stadium, you can gather a crowd of people, not just for self-marketing, but that there is an unction that can come upon a man that even with the simplicity of your speech, you can gather a whole nation. Billy Graham preached in North Korea. Can you imagine? Every president, he rose to a point of influence. And there are great men and you know that includes even fathers in our nation who saw that as a possibility. It was David Yonggi Cho of blessed memory who surprised the whole world in modern history. He developed a model with God and encountered an anointing that granted him grace to build an auditorium where people would come all around to worship 750,000 people per week. Are we together? Young Gichu of blessed memory. When he did that, our father and the Lord, Baba Deboe, went and met him. Watch this. They went there to see it. I'm saying this because he said it by himself. That when he went and stood there, that was the first time he had a man of God begging members not to come to the next Sunday so that others will have space. Have you ever seen that happen? That you beg and say, please, help those who have not come. Let them also enjoy the presence of God. So if you come this week now till miracle service, don't come again. <laughs> and our father in the Lord said, he saw this and he said, my God, so God can move like this in a man. He returned back and today the RCCG is a global testimony of what God can do. I've been there many times. I've had the honor and the privilege of preaching alongside our father in the Lord. And I have seen this with shock and wonder. When they are buying lands, they don't measure like the way you measure in a tape. You just keep moving wherever it stops. Today we can believe God for great things. Like we say in Nigeria, who dash monkey banana for some of us to be trusting God for big visions and big dreams for the kingdom. We saw others who went ahead of us that God could honor a man beyond your local place where you are domiciled at. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In this season, everything you have seen God do through men that is needed for your destiny, may you come into that experience. Amen. Hallelujah. Young Cho has gone to be with the Lord today. For those who never had the privilege to see him, a father in the Lord that the Jew is still alive and strong. And today he has become a model. Every time I have the honor of going to the campground, I just look at that place and I'm like, my God, what did you tell this man? Three kilometer by three kilometer. That is one auditorium. That is one space. That's not the only space. Three kilometer by three kilometer. Hallelujah. I've been to the Redeemed Campground in Dallas. Amazing. Massive estate. As if it's not America. This is God for you. Can I tell you? By this revelation tonight, may your faith be enlarged. Yes. Shout a loud amen. May your faith be enlarged. Yes. God's servant Bishop Oyedeko started right from Kaduna. Right from that lowly, there are people today who are in ministry who were there when he was starting. And today God has lifted him and given the ministry a spread across the globe. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. Number one. Pioneering requires humility to keep growing and not to fight improvements when you see it. The danger of pioneering is that because 
most pioneers are emotionally connected to their pain. They are emotionally connected to the lonely nights, the sacrifices that have gone into doing what they are doing. Anytime they see an improvement on what they have done, they will most likely frown at it. It is the weakness that comes with pioneering. Hallelujah. This is true. If you have ever pioneered anything in any degree in your life, you will know the bias. How many of you have seen parents buy their first car? Remember, the first car that they will never sell. Your dad is a billionaire and yet that first car is somewhere in the garage. Sir, why won't you sell this car? And he will tell you, you let me, this car reminds me that God is faithful. And when the car is scattered and gone, he will keep one tire, he will keep one gearbox, and you, are you worshipping it? And he says, you will not understand. I used to wonder many years ago why a lot of elderly people seem to be emotionally connected to things that didn't make sense to young people. They will keep certain monuments. They will keep certain gifts. You will see a man holding a very squeezed book, holding one squeezed letter, and he will not let it go. And you say, this letter, I got this letter in 1941. This was the first award I received. And the person he's talking to is sleeping. Because it makes no sense to you. So it is not unusual that when you pioneer things and they work at any level, you become emotionally connected to your results such that it becomes difficult to embrace improvement. Imagine that the Wright brothers came back to life and they saw what looked like the initial stages of their invention. They would run away from their own invention. Today we have supersonic aircraft. I mean that can move kilometers within minutes. I'm not sure they saw that far when they started. How about those who started vehicles? You see, let me tell you this. Models must be secured enough to allow improvement without feeling like failures. It is one thing models need to understand. One of the reasons I tell you with all due respect why the body of Christ has not evolved is because the emotional connect of models to the dealings that they had with God may not easily allow them to embrace other dimensions of God because they are emotionally connected to the things that have produced their result today. But God is always in motion. Did you hear what I said? Technology is a lesson to us that any model that you see is not yet the best of its version. Phones, cars, every year there is improvement on the models. It is because of the flexibility of science to allow creativity find its cause that today we have all kinds of things. If those who initially brought for us technology if they sat on what they did and said there cannot be improvement listen the model of healing that we know is the one we saw from scripture and the one that has been demonstrated to us but I, I tell you before Christ returns you will see other models of healing where people will stand from one position and literally speak to nations who would have known that the sun can stand still over a territory but one person did it and just because it's not been done again does not mean it will not be done. If the need arises, the same God can make it happen. If making the sun stand still is a strategy for massive salvation, you can trust that the Lord of the harvest will place grace on someone. But the question is when it happens, will you have the heart to believe? See, the current move of God always almost always fights the next move of God it is a limitation the second limitation with models the current move of God always almost always seems to fight the next move of God if I have seen God move this way if I have seen God lift men this way if I have seen God prosper men this way Chances are excellent that when I see God move again in a way that is foreign to my experience, immediately I flag it off and I say, no, God cannot prosper this way. Now look up, let me give you an example. I will never advocate carelessness, laziness, get rich quick, and so on and so forth. 
The model for wealth as we know in our world is diligence, the Lord blessing the works of your hands and you grow gradually. If you build a house after 20 years, 30 years, men will clap for you and say, that's right, that's how life works. But in the economy of God, there are other possibilities that only few people have revealed. For instance, by this time tomorrow. Now, what if that happens to someone? You have defied all the economic laws you know. That is not throwing away the laws. It is building on that foundation that God can also go this far. How about a fish producing coin? How about manna falling from heaven? What other dimension is there to God that we have not seen? What other dimension is there to the kingdom? What other dimension is there to evangelism that we have not seen? Imagine that for instance, just an example, a man now steps into a dimension of intercession where you pray in a certain way and the Spirit of God can literally make a multitude of people to have dreams of the cross in one night. That can be a dimension. And you find multitudes saved by the next day. Everybody saying, I had the same kind of dream. And thousands of people get born again by themselves in one day. Could it be that that is a dimension that is reserved for the end time? Models are important. But the challenge with models, number one, I repeat, is that because they are emotionally connected to their current results and their experiences, chances are excellent that sometimes they can feel insecure and they can feel like failures if any improvement is added on their initial experience. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you the truth. When I started ministry, I didn't see this kind of manifestations that you see now. I know there are times you are teaching and then when you start ministering, you see that maybe a special healing program and people are shouting jumping up and down but we did not see it in this manner I had to study scripture myself to say I hope that this thing is of God how do you talk and every day people are shouting from start to finish if it's a miracle service people understand but even when you are joking somebody is still shouting so I needed to go to scripture and say God what is wrong am I all right It was William Branham who would stand on a crusade ground and not minister for a long time. And he would say he's waiting for the angel that signifies his revelation. He would stand walking for a long time and later on he would just smile and say he has come and begin to prophesy. Now, I'm not saying you use that model, but I'm saying these are possibilities that have been shown in scripture, have been shown in the lives of men. It would be stupid for any man to go to a river in Abuja and sit down and say, fish, come quickly, bring my house rent. No. But it would be totally, it would be totally unbelief on your own part to shut that possibility from God. If it happened once, it, a portal has been opened again. It will not close. It will only be administered when it is needed. You see that now. Every possibility that is open in the spirit creates a portal in the earth where it can happen again and again. Sometimes they are reserved because the saints are not matured enough to walk in that dimension. God seeing that it can lead to another kind of error that will end up destroying the body of Christ. Now, most people who are new in the faith may not understand a strange experience that we used to have many years ago. It was the experience of oil and gold dust. There used to be these experiences. When we started ministry, many people would have these experiences. Oil coming out of their hands. I had videos where oil was dropping from a cross in a church. Not manipulation. You will see it from the video. Jars of oil. You will see feet of angels. Layers with gold dust, silver dust. As we saw this thing, there was a breakout of it that time in Zaria. Many believers started coming into it. You know what? It now started leading to error because many people will go to pray and be looking around their body. 
they wanted gold dust and God withdrew that sign till today. So there are many things that God will not allow, not because he cannot do it. He is more interested in the growth of believers. I have cried myself. Many of us who are, have been quite old in this ministry know, I have cried myself and what came out is oil, not tears. Sometimes we don't share these testimonies because we do not want to create a negative pattern. Someone will go now and say, wow, so oil is proof of anointing. And start praying and say, if you, oil is not coming out of your hand, you don't know God. Another movement will start credited to your model. Are you seeing that now? It is the reason why we hide our experiences like I taught you behind the cross and we insist that only that which is consistent is, is consistent with scripture is known and revealed to people. But let me tell you, there are many, many experiences. There are some things I will tell you about my life and my experience with God. Some of you will not even believe it. So we shelve it and give glory to God. And that which is profitable to the church is what we communicate. Many of us here, I believe, are going to be models to a generation. You must beware. Hear me? Models are foundations. You must be secured enough for improvements to be made on what you have laid and yet not feel like a failure. How many of you have seen the foundation of a house? Do you paint it? The foundation of the house is about the ugliest part of that building. It's even so down that you don't see it. Yet that is what holds the building. Hallelujah. All of the aesthetics in this beautiful auditorium is courtesy, the strength of the foundation that is laid. So there are people who have modeled certain dimensions of God. But right now God is bringing other word-based scripture consistent dimensions it's like seals that have been closed for the end time and now they are being opened we are seeing god move in ways that we never imagined again that he would move we are seeing god do things now are we together now that may be foreign to the experience of people but is consistent in scripture i'm saying this that when you become a model even if you are samuel or eli be careful when God begins to speak to Samuel in a way you do not understand. Don't call it an attack and don't call it error. Among the many failures of Eli, one thing he did right was to discern that even though his eyes were dim, he had seen that a new move is rising called Samuel and he was secured enough to say if God speaks to you, maybe if I were Eli and I hear that God is calling Samuel, Maybe some of us would have killed Samuel and said you would die here and now. Isn't that true? Maybe some of us would have said if God ever speaks to you, Samuel is a demon spirit. But Eli told him if he says this, say speak for your servant heareth. And that became the journey that made Samuel a mighty prophet who ordained the kings in Israel whose word did not fall to the ground. Many of us are inevitably going to be better than our parents financially, spiritually, ministerially. But let me give you a word of caution. Never fight foundations because of the beauty of the superstructure. Did you hear what I said? Today, when we say the inventors of vehicles, with all due respect, we don't call Toyota, we don't call Mercedes-Benz. We don't call all of these cars, even though they have produced cars at a level we never imagined. The credit still goes to those who founded it. If I ask you who is the founder of electricity today, as much as we know and history has told us, you would not mention the guy working in the power holding company in Nigeria. You would not even walk, mention the one who started solar panels. No, the credit still goes to the foundation. This again, becomes a caution for the generation rising. We must never look down on fathers and those who have become models because we may have seen certain areas. No. A foundation is why a building stands. A building can crash down and you can rebuild it if the foundation is right. The Bible says if the foundation be destroyed. Remember my teaching last week? 
I told us that the stature of a man in the spirit is beyond the quality of his rema for want of word. If you depend on just the quality of our speakings to measure spirituality, you will make a mistake. You would have said Billy Graham. Billy Graham did not perform many known miracles as we see. In fact, I didn't find any quite frankly in his videos. Of course, I believe there will be others. However, will I ever stand and try to match my stature with Billy Graham today? No. Even a blind man who is not born again knows that there is an east and west difference. Hopefully we will rise in our lifetime, but we are still on the journey and we must recognize it.